In this episode, the latest travel headlines related to coronavirus and what it's like to be an expat during lockdown. Welcome to the new daily World Nomads podcast. We'll be keeping you up to date with travel alerts, information about coronavirus and sharing some uplifting news and views to inspire you and keep you smiling. Hi, it's Kim and Phil putting on hold our destination episodes and using the time to give you a daily roundup of all the major coronavirus related travel headlines. This is at the time of recording, of course, and hear your stories of self isolation or lockdown. But what are some of those headlines, Phil? All right, well, the big news is that the Tokyo Olympics has been postponed for a year to 2021. Look, that's a huge economic blow to uh, Japan. Obviously, not just all the athletes, but it's a massive sort of tourist draw card. As well. Cuba has closed its doors for the next 30 days to combat the spread of coronavirus and Yosemite National Park in California is closed until further notice. Lots of national parks have been closing facilities but this is the first time there's been a full closure of a park. Well here in Australia where World Nomads headquarters is, Hamilton Island in the Witch Sundays is shutting down for the foreseeable future. But they've had a rough trot the last couple of years. So it's only two years ago they had that cyclone went through, wasn't it? I think everybody around the globe would agree Australia's had a rough trot recently. Yeah, fair enough. When it comes to the airlines, Virgin Australia is cutting more domestic flights and Emirates has slashed its passenger flight destinations to 13 that's down from 145. Hey, have you heard about Singapore as well? Singapore Airlines and Silk Air, they've got, how many planes have they got? 147 planes and they're grounding 138 of them. You can't transit through Singapore either. They're not taking transits. Yeah, that's right. I did read that. Well, well picked up. Thank you very much. <laughs> And look, there are plenty of uplifting stories. You only have to follow social media to get a laugh or a smile like the Chicago residents belting out Bon Jovi's living on a prayer from their windows and their balconies. Um, The keyboardist, David Bryant, has been diagnosed with COVID-19. Oh, no. Yeah, look, people haven't lost their sense of fun. Even some of the tweets make you smile like this one. On the sofa and hear boyfriend start laughing to himself in the kitchen. Turns out he just learned that 88 couples have come out of quarantine in China and immediately filed for divorce. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Well, Martina is an Argentinian with a passion for travel. After living in Denmark and exploring Europe for a year, The time came to keep the adventure going in New Zealand. So let's check in with her, Phil, and see what's happening. So right now, um, so I've been living in New Zealand for uh, nearly six years. Um, I just came with a working holiday and then stayed. And my partner, he's from Chile, so we're both expats. And right now it's interesting because, as I was telling you before, I'm like just um, following the news back home, I'm following the news here in Arge- here in New Zealand, and so like one thing that kind of like it's a bit of a silver lining, it's that um, I think the the government in Argentina has acted really quickly and with like with the whole weight of the state, let's say. So just like protecting people, everyone's under quarantine. It's um, it's mandatory. And but it's funny because I I was following the news and you could see like many people will go to the beach or like just um, go to their summer houses. Um, so then now everyone needs to stay home. And my parents are already 65, so I was quite worried about them because my dad he's uh, self-employed, so he was still going out up until a couple of days ago. And now we just thought, we spoke yesterday and it's okay. Everyone's home. They already have a plan in place and they're fine. So I think like one of the things about being so far from home is knowing that the government is really doing their best, which of course I really um, wish I was there with them. And here in New Zealand, it's also similar, just in that she's um, doing a great job trying to keep us all safe so yeah that's that's the situation now it's hard being 
um, far from home, but at the same time, I feel they're also being taken care of in a way. It's strange, isn't it? Because you're so used to jumping borders and um, yes. flitting around the world and now all of a sudden you can't do that or get to your family. There must be a, certainly a level of anxiety for you. Um, it is, uh, but at the same time, I don't know, I try to be as conscious as possible. Like, um, like I wouldn't dare in a way to like, challenge these restrictions because at the same time being a traveler i know um like what it takes to to jump borders as you said kim and that it's important to take care of each other i think like one thing travelers and expats can kind of like leverage at this stage is just being conscious like we've been in many many places hence we know that people in different parts of the world live different um styles or like have different access level, levels of access to the things that we are very used to so um yeah it's just like trying to take care of everyone really i actually had a trip planned to argentina i'm supposed to leave i'm supposed to go at the beginning of july so now of course i don't know if that's happening and then my mother-in-law she's uh, from chile she was coming in three weeks time um, of course, that's not happening. So it's very stressful. But at the same time, I personally believe that, um, <laughs> sorry if this is, sounds a little bit of a woo-woo, but like you can be really close to someone physically and have a big emotional distance. So maybe now it's time to accept that we are far from the people that we love as experts, but that we can also connect at a deeper level emotionally and just like keep in touch with our families and support each other and then also like as an as a traveler and an expat um, I'm also quite used to dealing with uncertainty and as a freelancer so you know like if you work from home if you're a freelancer you're used to dealing with like getting your clients and just just dealing with like life uh, uncertainty so I guess maybe it's a good time to turn back into that feeling of okay so it's a curveball that life is throwing at us but we actually have a chance to to grow you mentioned your dad is is self-employed and you as a freelancer are you worried about your income well it's funny because at the moment i'm i'm very, very lucky i'm fully booked for work but then many friends are asking me that. And that, said, that being said, uh, I am kind of worried. But again, I've been so worried in the past that now I'm like, okay, I know at this stage I have the skills and the tools to like keep going and, and just, I'm kind of like putting together a little bit of a strategy, like a mindset strategy of understanding that um, I can, stay positive and really keep uh, the flow of work coming but my partner he works in construction he's an electrician so every day every time he calls me from work I'm like what did they say are you working tomorrow are you not working tomorrow so that's quite um that's quite unsettling I understand uh there's so many people that's really like really struggling right now we I don't own a house maybe that's related to like all the travel I spend most of my money traveling but I can imagine like if you're paying a mortgage and and you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow because we none of us really know and what would then be your closing message to to expats people in your situation um if you're an expat and you cannot go home or you cannot have your family with you just connect with that um, sense of adventure. I know this sounds crazy, but just connect with that energy that says that um, you can actually deal with uncertainty and be okay and just um, go with the day by day. Like everyone's plans have gone to the rubbish bin right now. So just, um, yeah, just try and stay connected with the family, showing them that you are 
staying positive and really let that reflect. Yeah, tough times yeah. when you're forced away from family. And look, since recording that chat with Martina, New Zealand is now preparing to go into lockdown. Full lockdown. Look, uh, please share your uh, COVID-19 story with us. Email us at podcast at worldnomads.com. Uh, in tomorrow's episode, you catch up with Jessie, who shares her loss of income from her travel since the pandemic. And just like that tweet you mentioned, Jessie will speak about adjusting from being the sole person who works from home to now sharing an extremely small Manhattan apartment with her fiancé. I've got the same here. The schools have closed in Sydney, so my wife and I are working from home, and now the kids are going to be doing as well. I don't think we've got enough desks. Good luck, Phil. Good Thanks, luck. Thanks, mate. Bye. Bye. The World Nomads Podcast. Explore your boundaries.